Welcome to video three for week three. In this video, I want to talk about the ideas of polar coordinates and how polar coordinates work for change of variables. I'm going to talk about the, the basic concept of polar coordinates and its properties in this video. Video four will have examples of actually using polar coordinates for change of variables. These two videos and the week four videos on cylindrical and spherical coordinates cover what are arguably the three most important change of variable setups. These are setups that let us use certain types of circular spherical symmetries that often show up in applications. So we want to give special attention to these changes of variables. Let me briefly remind you how polar coordinates work. So in polar coordinates, a point in the plane is defined by its radius r, which is the distance from the origin to that point, and an angle theta, which is the angle between the line from the origin to that point and the positive x-axis measured counterclockwise, going all the way from 0 to 2 pi. The radius is a positive number. Theta needs to be a number between 0 and 2 pi. That gives us the polar coordinate system. We've already talked about the partial derivatives, but let me recap here. So the transformations in terms of the Cartesian coordinates are x and y are r cos theta, r sine theta. If you take the partial derivatives, take the determinant of the Jacobian matrix, you get the Jacobian is r. So dx dy gets replaced with r dr d theta. If you wanted to do the inverse substitutions, you'd have r equals square root of x squared plus y squared, and theta to be the inverse tangent of y over x, at least when x is not equal to 0. And that gives you the setup of going back and forth between polar and Cartesian coordinates. I want to talk a little bit conceptually about polar coordinates by talking about the polar coordinate grid. So one of the things I care about is I care about when one of the two coordinates are constant. I care about that because when setting up iterated integrals, I need one of the two coordinates to be constant. So I care about the lines where one of the coordinates are constant. Those lines are going to give me what I call the coordinate grid. The conventional rectangular grid of Cartesian coordinates has vertical lines, that's where x equals a constant, and horizontal lines where y equals a constant. Here, if theta equals a constant, theta equals 0, theta equals 3 pi over 2, uh, theta equals 5 pi over 4, I get a ray. These rays happen at places where the angle is constant. Any of the points on that ray have the same angle. So the first constant lines I get are rays, and then I get circles where the radius is constant. So I have r equals 1, r equals 2, r equals 3 moving out. Those give me the other types of loci that describe where one of the other, where the other variable is constant. This means that any region that is bounded by either rays or circles, I can express in polar coordinates as a region with constant bounds. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But this, this really gives us a conceptual visualization of what polar coordinates are about. When I think about the polar coordinate system, visually I think about this grid. I think about the, this spider web or uh, arrangement of lines. That really is in my mind the visualization of what the polar coordinates are, the same way that this rectangular grid is a visualization of what the Cartesian coordinates are. The other thing I want to talk about before I get into regions of integration is units. So if I have a dA term, it's an infinitesimal piece of area. If I think about it as dy dx, well, it's a distance times a distance. It has units of distance squared. Over here, radius is a unit of distance. Angle doesn't have a unit. You think one of the ways to define angles as a ratio of two distances. So if I have a distance over a distance, then the units of that don't exist. The, the units of distance cancel out. This is how angles work. Angles have no units. So multiplying by r, multiplying by a radius term, gives me another unit of distance. So this will still have, from the r and from the dr, units of distance squared. This is a thing where, especially when we're dealing with angles, we could keep in mind to check that the units work out. So whenever we have angles in the, in the differential pieces, we're going to need to have something that accounts for that by adding a unit of distance back in. All right, let me talk about common regions of integrations where polar coordinates are useful. Obviously, if I want to integrate over a circle, then polar coordinates are going to work very well. They're based on circles. 
So I want to integrate, integrate over a circle. I'm going to have a circle of radius capital R. The bounds will be the radius will go from 0 to R, and the angle will go all the way around. That will give me a full circle. I can only go a portion of the way around, and that will give me a wedge kind of shape. Alternatively, I could go all the way around and have a range of radii from a smaller radius to a larger radius. That's going to give me a shape called an annulus. And I can have two restrictions where the angles and the radii are both restricted. And that's going to give me a shape that I'm going to call an arc, although this is less of a technical term, just sort of what I'm going to refer to them as. I suppose wedge is not as much a technical term as well, although annulus really is what we call these ring shapes. And here, here are the pictures of that. So these are the four kind of things you get with constant bounds in polar coordinates. If the angles go all the way around and the radius goes to zero, you get a circle. If you limit the angles, you get a wedge on a circle. If you limit the radii, you get an annulus, a ring. If you limit both, you get sort of a section of an annulus, which I'm going to refer to as an arc. If I have any region that looks like this, I'm going to want to do polar coordinates. Those are not the only places where polar coordinates are good. Those are going to be the most obvious places where I'm going to want to choose polar coordinates. In the next video, I'm going to do a bunch of examples over regions that include many of these uh, circles, wedges, annuluses, and arcs.